You're welcome back to The Breakfast, where the conversation right now is about NIMC. NIN registration nationwide is on hold because NIMC workers are accusing the government of covering up COVID-19 and its infections, you know, among staff in the country. They're saying the government has failed to provide them with protective equipment. They're saying they're not receiving uh, COVID-19 hazard allowances like other frontline workers are. And so everyone who is not registered would have to wait a little longer to do so. We're now being joined by an analyst. Uh, his name is Babajide Benson to help us discuss this matter. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning and thank you for having me. Welcome. So let's, uh, let's delve right into this matter. Talking about NIMC registration, what do you think about the accusation that the federal government is covering up COVID-19 in the agency and puts in workers at risk of an infection? Well, um, it may not be unfounded. There's no smoke without fire. Um, I listened to a news item yesterday where one of the aggrieved workers talked about one of their staff being infected with COVID-19 and having to take care of himself or herself. Now, whether that is true or not, it requires some attention and act of responsibility on the part of the federal government. Because my belief is that you cannot approbate and reprobate at the same time. You're asking people to socially distance, to wear masks, and to obey all the other guidelines of COVID-19. In the same vein, they're threatening people that if they don't do something they could have done in the past four or five years, within three weeks, then their lines will be disconnected or what have you. So the federal government has brought a problem upon itself at a time like this. Um, um, Jenny Benson, the... the this was always going to be a problem. I mean, if we've been Absolutely. following this you know story for you know since when it broke when the nin rush started it was always going to be a problem there was already conversations about the safety of the um nigerian uh, citizens who were going to be trying to get registered they tried to make it digital at first um that doesn't seem to be working out very well so how come th all these aspects were in thought of you know before they made these decisions it's interesting that she asked me that question. So I'll take you out of here and I'll bring you back. Years ago, one of the big four consulting firms globally with, and with, with offices in Nigeria, PricewaterhouseCoopers, they ran a campaign called Connected Thinking. But what appears to happen on the part of government very many times is connected on thinking. I do not know how a government that has an identity management commission cannot work with the NITDA, Information Technology Development Agency, to make this a tech-based registration. I mean, by dialing a code, it should be possible for people to be able to register with their phones. So let's agree that, let's excuse the government that there are a lot of illiterates in Nigeria who do not understand how technology works. How about you extremely decentralize where people, um, the registration process and where people can register? The palaces of Obas and chiefs in communities across the country, the 774 local governments, the banks, the telco offices, the constituency offices of elected representatives, other government agencies and what have you. So while some people are able to register on their phone digitally, others are able to do it physically. Because what it does, it reduces the workload of the NIMSI um, officials it reduces the number of rising COVID-19 cases. If there's a link that people can go to on their phone, they'll be able to do this. Everybody can take a pic, a lot of people, not, let me not say everybody, a lot of people can take pictures with their smartphones. The details that the government is asking for is going to be provided by the people. The pictures are going to be taken on site. So I can take a picture with my phone and upload it onto a portal. So the government has brought this onto itself and it's sad that, um, the NIMSI staff are opening up um, a Pandora's box or a can of worms, if you like. Hmm. And yes, it's so important, you know, the, the essence of technology, digitization of processes in Nigeria, really, really important. But why is it that the government would like to wait, as it has seemed, for people to strike before they take action? 
irresponsibility. And there's several other words that one can use to explain it. But you see, this presents an opportunity for the NIMSI officials, and that's why they decided to go on strike at such a time as this. I mean, all of what they, all of what their allegations are could have been things that they've been um, trying to pass across to the government over time, but they paid little or no attention to it. Now that same government, that same leadership is asking them to work more because I would imagine that NIMSI is one of the agencies where the staff are not very busy. And then because of this new directive and policy by the government, now the staff have to work a lot more. So if they used to resume at what, eight o'clock or 8.30 and they were able to close at three o'clock or four o'clock, now they're having to resume earlier and stay much longer. They are at greater risk of COVID-19 as staff. The people who are coming to their offices are at greater risk of, of, COVID, of contracting COVID-19. And so whilst the government is saying that there's a second wave and people should not, uh, what do you call it, should not relax, they are the ones now giving the opportunities with these threats for the numbers to rise. Mm -hmm. and, and would you say that this, you know, this whole situation, you know, the deadline given, you know, by, by, by the federal government for Nigerians to register their SIMs and uh, register themselves for NIN, would you say this whole situation has given NIMT as a commission the opportunity to demand for things, you know, that they've always wanted? For example, you know, NIMT officials uh, complain that they have not been promoted for the past 15 years. They complain that uh, their salaries have not been increased increased and so many other challenges with welfare but maybe you know the government never took them serious so would you say now that there's a demand on the commission to you know fulfill the registration of over 160 million Nigerians would you say this is a good opportunity for them to you know fight for what they want well yes it's a good opportunity at least now they can hold the government by the jugular because the government is trying to achieve something for which it needs the members of staff of the agency and the, the staff are now saying, okay, this is our time to, to get back at you. You have ignored us for a long period. But then the government can have an escape route, which is to extensively decentralize the, um, the procedure for registration. I mean, what has happened yesterday is an embarrassment to the government. And it's, but it's going to give people the opportunity to heave a sigh of relief that, after all, the members of staff of NIMSI are on strike. So government cannot go ahead with the dates it has announced to say that they're going to disconnect people's lines or people's bank or block people's bank accounts. So whilst this is good for whilst it's like whilst whilst it's an opportunity for people to heave a sigh of relief, it's an opportunity also for the NIMSI staff to hold the government by the jugular, and the government should have done um, some house cleaning before he came to the public with this agenda. I still think that the approach was wrong um, and it should be reconsidered. Um, you know, can we also, you know, uh, Jide Benson, would you also say that maybe we could give government um, kudos for uh, their efforts at at least, you know, trying to get Nigerians registered? They're maybe facing a lot of deadlines, as it seems, with regards to insecurity and uh, being, you know, able to be truly accountable for every single Nigerian. So. Would you say, you know, with the pressure that the government is under to ensure that some of these things are sorted out, um, you know, it, it might be, you know, hard to avoid some of the, you know, the rush that we are seeing today? Um, at the last time, personally, and I'm sure that a lot of people are on this table, there has been SIM card registration, there's voters card registration, I have a driver's license, I have a passport, and I have done the name. Um, I'm, I think there's one other. So at the last count, I'm sure that every Nigerian would have at least one of such. So where it's just a multiplicity of um, registrations that we're having. The person who is driving is captured in one database or another. The voter is captured in one, ba in one database or the other through NIMSI, through Telco. So it doesn't have to be NIMSI. I mean, the claim of security is just an excuse. If you've listened to the government, they've said those who already have it should link with their, what, their telcos. telcos. And those who don't already have it, have a deadline. How about you say those who don't have the, the NIN registration, whatever other um, government recognized registration can be presented, they can achieve the same objectives with some of this with some of the prior registrations, whether it's the 
voter's card or the telco registration or BVN. Yes, that's the one I forgot earlier on. There's the BVN, there's the driver's license, there's the passport, there's the voter's card. So all of what the government should be doing is to link all of this together. Some of these agencies actually have no business existing. Hmm. All right. And now I, I actually agree with that because really if there's, you know, you have your BVN, like many people do, many people own bank accounts, even though some, you know, don't, you know, and all these, you know, several other means of identification, I do believe that uh, they should all be merged and such, you know. The NIN, the NIMC can cooperate with other, you know, agencies, can cooperate with these other, you know, agencies of government to make sure that you're not having, you know, extra stress on your agencies and on Nigerians. So now about the NIN registration, you know, right now the NIMC workers are striking. What then does that mean for the registration deadline? They've extended it to January and February and uh, they're saying if your SIM is not linked at that time, it will be blocked. What then does this mean for that deadline? Would this be further adjusted or do we all just get to suffer? What it means, first of all, like I said earlier, is it's heaving a sigh of relief by those who have been trying tooth and nail to get registered. The members of staff would also heave a sigh of relief because they've had to work extra hours in more dangerous times for longer periods. So everybody can now um, assume a state of to the to Israel because now there's, in quote, a force major. There's something that has made those dates um, impossible to achieve. If you are taking out yesterday and you're taking out today, we don't know for how long this is going to continue. It means the government will now have to start to have discussions with them through the Labour Minister or Minister of State for Labour or any other um, delegated representative. So I think that this gives the government an opportunity to, re to rethink or reconsider the approach to the NIMSI registration. As I said, there's need for extensive decentralization, local communities. How about you adopt something similar to an structure during, um, during elections? You may not be that granular, but it's important that you look for other areas. People don't have to travel miles to get to NIMSI. For instance, Alausa has been what a chaotic situation in the past one week or thereabouts. And you're asking elderly people, you're asking young people, you're asking old, old people, all people who are within the COVID-19 age bracket and outside to go to one place to go and register. All the local government offices in Lagos and beyond should be busy at this time. All 774 of them should be busy at this time. A lot of sister government agencies should be co-opted into it, whether it's the NITDA or the NOTAP. Um, NIMSI should go a, be a borrowing, if you like, borrowing offices from sister agencies, and that's the way to achieve this. So if the government can adopt that, they will find out that even the, the call by the NIMSI officials won't, won't have much of an effect on the activities uh, of the registration. Right. Before, before we go, I, I, I also want you to speak on you know, something that I had mentioned earlier, and that is um, the perspective where a government should always be willing to be held responsible for the lives of each and every one of its citizens and its workers, public health workers, you know, in every um, ministry, department, or agency. Um, when a government doesn't provide protective equipment for its staff, you know, and, and, you know, of course, we've heard about the billions and billions of naira that have been spent um, during this COVID-19 era in Nigeria. Um, without these PPEs being provided, without a safer working environment for staff, do you think the Nigerian government has that same mindset of being responsible for every one of those lives and will take responsibility for every single NIMC uh, worker that gets infected with COVID-19 in this process and maybe dies? No. So unfortunately, while the government mouths and gives the impression that it cares about everybody, in reality, the reverse is always the case, or the opposite is always the case. I mean, what is happening at the NIMSI registration centers is, a, is an indication enough that the government doesn't care or the government is not in control of the situation. I mean, another thing that could be done to be make this thing in alphabetical order. We know the names in Nigeria, we know the letter alphabets in Nigeria that would have a lot of people um, have a lot of people whose surname starts with those letters, maybe the A's or the O's or the S. 
How about you create a special center for those people? How about you create a special center for, say, maybe females or males or students or what have you? Schools are yet to resume. How about you make some schools registration centers for well, a week before schools resume? So the government clearly says one thing and does the exact opposite. There's, there's a lot more talk than action. These are very perilous times. Whilst the government is doing a lot of campaign that people should be mindful of COVID-19, that's approbating. Government is reprobating by not managing the situation well. Thank you very much, uh, Babajide Benson, for your time and thoughts on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning to you. Um, um, of course, you know, he has made uh, pretty solid points. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I would, and I'm, this one thing that I would always continue to push about government's responsibility and being able to hold uh, the government accountable uh, where necessary. We would want the Nigerian government to understand that every single one of its workers, level zero to level 14, whatever level you want to call, um, the government should be responsible for their safety and the government should be able to act, be asked questions about the safety of these workers. If you've put them in harm's way um, during a pandemic, then, you know, the government should be held responsible. Yes. And so PPEs, come on. It, it, these are some of the things that we should have, you know, readily available. Right from day one, right from February 2020. Yes. And something I need to emphasize is just the irony, the double sidedness, you know, the hypocrisy, so to speak, about how the government will come out and say, make sure you do social dis you practice social distancing. But at the time. same thing, you're asking them, go out, 100 million of you, go out and register. So, like, what is the message, really? Right. But uh, let's, uh, let's get uh, your thoughts on this on social media. Follow us at Plus TV Africa. And let the, let keep the, let's keep the conversation going. We'll go on a break here, and uh, we'll return to discuss with uh, two doctors about COVID-19 and vaccines in Nigeria.